Okay, welcome back for part three of how to make a greeting card. I am Candace Fields and I am here to show you how I make my um, greeting cards using Photoshop. So I have now opened up Photoshop and let me see, can I make this bigger for you guys so you guys can see the entire screen. Um... So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up a new file and I'm going to make a landscape card. So I'm, I already have this template here. So I'm just going to create. Okay, so now I have my basically my card base. So I, I'm going to do a thank you card because I have an order that I need to ship out. And of course, I want to thank her for her order. So I'm going to do a custom card. So I'm trying to think, well, what do I want my background to be? I have my image that I'm going to use. So I am, actually, let me pull up another one Um, to pull up. Oh, goodness gracious. Let me do it by application. And let's see, because one of these, let's see, some of, so I have tons of background paper. But I'm trying to figure out which one is which right now. Um, that is a font. Ugh, I don't think I hate about the Apple computer is how this goes back. Because what I wanted to show you is how to um, do your backgrounds. I'm just looking because I'm not sure what I possibly have done with it. Okay, maybe this was it. This was it. Okay, so I um I'm gonna go into I just wanna see which one which file it was. So now I'm gonna go into open. I'm gonna go back into my downloads. Okay. I am Boho Animal Digital. Okay, so now I want to see which background I want to use. And I think I'm going to use this light one here. Okay, so now that's how it's going to come up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit, define pattern, and I'm going to go ahead and rename this um, to Boho 8. Okay, so now I want to go back into my template here. I'm going to at the bottom of my um, screen, you can't see it here. Um, I'm trying to get everything back to where it was. Okay. You can't see it here, but there's a button. It's called FX. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Pattern Overlay. So now I'm going to go into patterns and I think I actually already had it in here, but there goes the pattern. Now, as you can see, there has this line here. We don't want that. So I'm going to move this around and it's like, okay, that's not going to work. So I'm going to make, I'm going to scale this to be a little bit larger, move it around. And now I don't see those lines. So that is good. So I'm going to click OK. So now I have 
my background. This is actually going to be a pretty simple thank you card. So now going back into my files, I am using um, Feathers of Style from Etsy. And this is Fashion Girl volume number four. Yeah, okay, if it's before. Yeah, I really had to think about it. And I got all of this stuff open. I've been working today. And I'm going to this down. So this is the girl that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to click her and drag her over. Let me see. Do I want it to be just a little bit smaller? I'm going to bring her over to the side. And I think what I'm going to do is... I now sometimes depending on the background that you're using you may want to add a stroke which just adds a layer to make it pop I'm not going to do that this go around because I don't think it's needed it looks good like that too but I don't think it's needed um but what I am going to do is I'm going to add like a drop shadow okay just to give it um yeah i think that looks good just to give her a bit of a shadow so now i'm going to add my text and i'm just gonna go ahead and start typing because now what i'm going to do is to get my font but first things first I definitely want this to be large and I'm going to use an autumn font that I have oh I think I'm going oh now it wants to show up it didn't want to show up for me before so I'm going to use this font here autumn leaves um let's see how that looks So I'm gonna move it down. Okay, so that makes it centered. But I actually think I'm gonna make this bigger. Okay. And then color wise. I do not want this black. I want it to be um, somewhat with the color. Um, I mean, there is black in it, but I, I, I just don't want that black. So I'm just picking a color that's within this um, um, picture here. So that way we know that it matches. Okay, so there, and so now, I'm going to go back to, boom, there we go. The one thing I did notice, depending on how you print in the printer that you're using, um, your darker colors, so like I did this one earlier today, and I had like a shadowing effect on the side, and it was really pissing me off. Sorry to use that word if you get offensive, but um, but it's because it's a darker color and it's mostly dark color. So I went back and I printed this pink one and I didn't have that problem. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind that depending on your primary color for your card, the printing may be off. Um... Okay, so let's go back to this real quick. So now, to this, because that blends in a little bit, I do want a shadow on that. I mean, a stroke. So I add that stroke, so now it makes it pop a little bit more. And the color is already a dark brown from my previous project. So I'm going to keep that as it is. And there you go. Easy, simple. So now, this is done. 
Um, now, I mean, if you want to go all fancy, you can add like borders and things like that, but we're just keeping it simple. Um, so now one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to merge visible. So that makes my project into one, um, one um piece that's all together and the reason why i did that is i have my template over here that's where i'm going to do my printing and so i have my business information here and then my image is going to go into these two slots so i don't need this i don't need that um now if you're going to reuse this template or something like that you you're you are going to want to go back before you save it and and undo that merge but we don't need to do that in this kind of a project so um okay so i'm just gonna leave that alone and now what i'm gonna do is i'm just clicking clicking and i'm dragging it into here and dropping it and then i already have it where it's going to cut out an even in um in two even um regular a2 size cards so now that i have that i could go back and redo it or i can just go to um layer duplicate the layer and then bring over this piece and i'm done and now all i'm going to do is just send this to the printer and so I will be back to show you the finished product. Okay. So now this, uh, sorry for the, my desk is a bit junky right now. But this is the finished product once I have um, printed it out. And I love how this came out. Let me show you guys can see that. Now see that that's very pretty. Now this is printed on thick cardstock. Sometimes you may see it called cover stock. Um, the thickness of your paper really matters depending on, especially if you're going to sell your cards, because this is printed out on, I got this off of Amazon and it's, um, 325 gsm which means um grams grams per square meter and that really makes a difference but it also in order um i have a top loading printer so i'm able to print a thicker cardstock but if you have one of those front loading ones this will not make it through. And also, as you can see, it's from cup, from end to end. So I use a borderless um, when I print it. So you definitely want to use borderless if your printer allows you to have borderless. And so here goes a couple of more that I have printed. I've changed. I've been playing around with this for... Um, the font so I wanted to make it actually make it smaller but I'm, I'm gonna keep this as it is but the other ones are gonna be smaller so this is one that you saw um and I'm gonna actually use this for uh, um when I told you about doing hybrid digital hybrid cards I'm going to use this now, here is what I was talking about when I printed on brown. I got this little halo effect going around on the edges. And it's mainly because I did um, borderless. If you don't use borderless, you won't have that problem. But, um, but this was my first time doing this color on that particular printer. I know I have that issue on my other printer. And that's irregardless of what colors I use. And this is thinner, thinner card stuff. But, and then this is the card. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I would still use it. I mean, I wouldn't sell it, but I would use it. Okay, so now, because this is even, um, when I do, um, borderless 
I'm going to take my paper trimmer. Okay, and I got this from Stamping Up. And I am going to score on this edge at four and a quarter inches. I'm going to move this up. because So, on this trimmer, you have a, a um, cutting blade and a scoring blade. So, this is the scoring blade. And because I'm going to go over it a couple of times because of how thick this cardstock is. Now, what I'm going to do is flip it. Come back around at five and a half. I want to make sure that this is going to cut right. Okay. I'm going to bring my cutting blade down. Make sure this does not move. Okay. And now I have two cards. So out of a pack of paper, out of one sheet, you can get two cards. And so if you buy, you know, like a pack of 100, that's 200 cards that you can get. And so now because this is really thick cardstock, that's why I scored it. You're going to want to have a bone folder. And this bone folder is going to be used to crease down that edge. So that way you have a nice flat card. Okay, and then you can write your message on the inside. You could print a message and glue it on the inside if you want to do that. Um, you can reverse it and print um, and print your saying on the inside if you want to. Um, that one I have to play around with because you have to get your paper just right in a printer. So now, okay. so now one of these is going with my order um, to tell them thank you for placing that order. And but if you wanted to sell these, you of course have your envelope. I use these clear envelopes also. Um, these ones I got from um, Stampin' Up. And I'm just going to place my envelope on the inside of the card here. Now, you can definitely use a bigger um, envelope. So, these are actually designed to also be used as envelopes. So, you can mail these out just like that. With um, so, But I use these to actually keep my card stock keep my cards clean and I'm just trying to get this in here because it's a little bit of a tight fit and I cut through it okay yeah that's exactly what I did okay. now see you do a video I've been packing cards all day now that I go to do a video, <laughs> that's when you want to mess up. But you know, that's always how it goes, right? Because, and it's mainly because this is, um, it is very thick. And then with the envelope, adding the envelope is giving me less room. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just gonna start pushing this in. Without. Okay, there we go. Yeah, because you do have to, because it's gonna be nice and tight, you do have to play with it. Okay, and then there you go. So then you can mail this off to your um, to your client. And when you are mailing off, if you're selling them, if you mail it in off, 
Um, it is recommended that you use one of those sturdy um, envelopes, those like cardboard cardboard envelopes, um, just so it won't bend. Now this is very thick, so I can probably get away with using um, one of those plastic envelopes, but I would still want to mash this against something that's going to be very sturdy so my card doesn't get messed up. So, because then these are some of the other ones that I packaged up. I did happy birthday ones and stuff. Then I got some more that's in my bedroom that I finished packing up. So, so that is how you make, uh, how I um, like to make and package my digital cards. So, thank you so much for joining me. Now, if you would like, I will continue on the series on how to make um, handmade, hand-stamped cards. Okay, so thank you guys.